Okay, good morning to those of you who have joined us. We're going to get it underway in a couple of minutes, but just doing a few checks on sound this end. Um, I know we have a few who have just recently joined us, Delia, Holly, Jody, Leanne, Naomi, Steve, good morning. Um, if any of you could let us know uh, if you're hearing us loud and clear, that would be really helpful. So if you could just drop us a note back to say that uh, the sound is, is sounding good your end, that would be really fantastic. That's great. Thank you, Delia. Delia is hearing us loud and clear. Is there anybody else out there? Okay, we're just looking to get started in a minute or two again. If you've just joined us, uh, welcome. Uh, we're just doing a few sound checks, and if you could just let us know that you can hear us loud and clear, that would be great. So we know Delia is hearing us loud and clear. Thank you for your notes, Delia. Uh, if uh, Timothy, Steve, Naomi, Leanne, Jody, if any of the rest of you uh, would like to just drop us a note. Uh, to just let us know that uh, it's sounding good your end, that would be fantastic. Naomi, brilliant, sounds good to you. Great to have you on board, Jody. Thank you, Leanne, fabulous. Okay, fantastic. Right, we will then get underway. So I would like to formally welcome you. My name is Michelle Leavesley, and I'm the marketing director here at Crowd Control HQ. For those of you joining us for the first time, which I know there are a number of you, Crowd Control HQ is the UK's leading social media management and compliance platform. And I'd like to take this opportunity also to welcome a number of clients who are joining us to, today from an array of sectors. So at this session, we have a number of councils, leisure operators, utility businesses, and leading brands from automotive, finance, and banking, and very welcome today. And I guess the reason that you're joining us is because this webinar takes a look at social customer care, certainly a very hot topic uh, in, our, in our sector of customer care. And we're going to take a look at what the future holds around the use of social media. Um, I was quite staggered to read that the Institute of Customer Service uh, says that actually over 70% of us work in customer-facing roles. And increasingly, of course, one of the many ways we're communicating with our customers is through social media. And social media is now ranked by over 30% of the general population as their preferred channel for customer service today, which is obviously leading to a transformation of what used to be known as the customer call center to customer contact center. And that preference for social media, customer care, is only set to grow as it becomes the norm across industries. So no doubt those of you who are joining today have got your own very individual understanding uh, and appreciation of the growth of social customer care. And we want to hear from you, so please do uh, keep feeding back uh, comments, ideas. If you agree with the speakers, uh, please let us know. If you disagree with some of the speakers and what they've got to say, please. Uh, we want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, so today we're joined by two thought leaders in the field of social customer care. Um, I'm delighted that we have Abby Buck, social media manager for the leading transport operator, Arriva Universe, whose team is handling literally thousands of customer inquiries every single day. And she is joined by George Kalikath from uh, obviously Crowd Control HQ, head of client services, who has a very unique helicopter view of how a number of customer service teams run their social customer care operation using our social media platform, Crowd Control HQ. 
and we're going to hear some thoughts from them before opening the debate up to questions. Um, please fire the questions through as and when you think of them, as uh, the team uh, will be collating them, uh, and if appropriate, I will feed them through as we go, and then we will do a big roundup at the end of all the questions. If we have so many questions that we can't get through them all today, then we promise we will get back to you offline, so, so stay with us. Um, right, I am going to hand over to George, first of all, and he's going to do uh, an introduction to uh, customer care using social media. So over to you, George. Michelle, thank you very much for this lovely introduction. I'd like to start with a few key stats about uh, social media lately. Uh, research shows that uh, social customer care has a very positive influence on the business overall. We can see from the stats that Facebook likes have increased from 4.5 million to 36.7. This eightfold increase means that uh, there is much more content on Facebook, accessed by many more customers, and these customers are more engaging than ever. Meaning that they don't just watch the videos or photos, they share them, they like them, they endorse them. Additionally, as the stats show, 96% of users are influenced by online comments. Their decision on which product or service uh, they will choose is very much affected by reviews from other users. We all know how powerful word of mouth is, and the same principles apply in the online environment. The benefits, though, are for both parties, not only for the customers, but also for, also for the business. An agent is able to deal with eight times more inquiries on social than traditional means, such as calls or emails. A lot of potential, of course. Um, uh, this means that there's a lot of potential uh, for cost savings and uh, better time management. Social media is definitely innovating the way that uh, customer service is delivered as more and more people choose to use it. It becomes another channel of communication empowering the customers. Organizations need to treat this channel as part of their already existing and traditional communication tools. Listen and act upon the feedback that they receive from their customers. All customer service teams are facing a similar challenge. Social media has moved on. It is not the early days anymore when it was uh, just used for brand building, uh, marketing and promotion only. The online communities are much more mature and ready to talk to you. Based on research from uh, Harvard Business Review, social customer care can improve revenue by almost 7% year on year. And this is a stat that cannot be neglected. So, there are six main reasons uh, why social media is driving the bottom line and explains uh, why it is so important for both the customers and the companies. Uh, these are on your screen, as you can see, power to the people, convenience, credibility, engagement, and posting, and feedback, customer feedback. And of course, we will be um, uh, looking into those in a bit more detail um, in this session. The first one is empowerment. It gives power to the people. Recent research from Oracle has shown that 65% of the people prefer to use social media on phone. That is not just because of convenience, but also that it makes them feel that they have the power. The same research has shown that 68% felt that social media gave them a better voice. How many times have we felt that the service that we experienced was not, uh, not that great? The food was, uh, was a bit cold, yet we chose not to make a complaint. Social media gives people a medium to express themselves freely. Companies have now more ways of receiving the true story, the full picture, rather than the registered complaints only. By empowering your customers and making them feel that their voice can more easily be heard, you're making their buying decision easier. You put them in the driving seat, that allows them to extract more value from the purchase, which is important both for new business and retention, of course. The second reason is convenience. Uh, we are more and more mobile. Using social media and the ability to, talk, to contact our brands and ask them just adds a completely new dimension to the way that uh, customer service is delivered. Um, you are at the bus station waiting for your bus, probably something that uh, Abby from Arriva has definitely experienced. Chances are you're on Facebook, and therefore the ability to contact Arriva and ask them about your bus without having to call them works brilliantly for both parties. Being online and answering questions uh, while your customers are in the moment uh, might be all that it takes to help them make a purchase. 
or of course, if you don't answer it, hinder the sale. Convenience is strongly related to client satisfaction. The more satisfaction a customer has, the higher the spend. But as we previously said, convenience is uh, not just for the customer, but it's for both parties. Research by Gartner has shown that social media is uh, uh, not convenient only for the customer. It is also for the company. Agents are able to deal with eight times more service requests on social than phone. Being able to serve more people at the same time has an extremely positive impact on cost savings and time management. Credibility is now the third reason behind this. Some of the early adopters, like eBay, opened a completely new world in what we all knew as word of mouth, allowing their customers to do that online. And this is one of the principles around credibility. It is an extremely powerful tactic as customers don't have to search far in order to find independent others giving feedback based on their experience. Social media works in exactly the same way. Facebook reviews uh, is probably something that you're familiar with, uh, Twitter mentions, YouTube comments on product videos, and so many more examples. Uh, we see e word of mouth influencing decisions um, um, by adding credibility in a company's promise. More than often, uh, independent others participating in conversations on social media, expressing a good, uh, indifferent, or even bad uh, view about a product or a service that they have experienced. And this is where it is so interesting. Those reviews are coming from independent sources, independent people who have experienced this product or service already. Therefore, their opinion is perceived to be as credible as it gets. Moving on, the uh, George, George the can I just, um, George, sorry, um, obviously uh, questions are coming through and um, somebody just highlighted you in your second slide about convenience, you used uh, around the, the benefits, um, but one of the questions, and I don't know if you have a view on this, is what do you think the cost would be of not doing social customer service? Do you have any ideas around what would happen if, if a business didn't do uh, social customer service? No, that's a, that, that is a brilliant question. Um, Michelle, out of habits and potentially even common practice sometimes, we have established a direct connection between customer service and uh, the call center or emails or the receptionist desk, depending on the industry that we're focusing, of course. Um, what is the cost of the business uh, for the business of not having those? The principles of the game and the fundamentals are exactly the same. Social networks are not just another channel. Uh, just uh, are just another channel, just like just like phone or, or just like email or the receptionist desk. Just because you're not using it or or a company is not using it, doesn't it doesn't not make the uh, the complaints or the inquiries go away. This is another channel, and if you fail to tune in and listen to what is being said about you, you are missing out on a lot of feedback, a lot of the truth around your brand and your uh, product or service. Uh, you're missing on the environment and the convenience that uh, we have uh, commented on already and all the other features, all the other um, uh, bonuses that we will talk about in a bit. From two seemingly identical products or services, a customer or a prospect might uh, more likely choose uh, the one that they feel that they can extract more value out of it. It means that if your customers are contacting you on social and uh, you're not there to answer, uh, that is the equivalent of having your customer service phones ringing out or receptionist desk being completely empty. The only difference though is that if the phone rings out, uh, you will be the only one that notices it. You will be the only one that knows it, uh, the person that's called. If, however, you choose to answer questions on social, all of your customers will know it because it is all public. Uh, it is my opinion that the not doing customer service is uh, it is very beneficial both for sale but also for attention. Okay, that's great. Thanks. So, so that idea of phones ringing out, that cringe, uh, cringe feeling that that all of us get as uh, marketing teams, the thought of our customers being left hanging. Um, you're saying actually it's it's even worse in a social environment because. Uh, it's such a transparent public window that everybody gets to see um, that that lack of customer care. So, okay, great question. Absolutely. And if you the, keep, the information keep, is publicly available. Fantastic. Uh, if you can keep questions coming through as we go, then that's great. So, sorry, George, back to you. So, number four. 
Thank you, Michelle. That was very nice to bring this to number four, Andrew, which is engagement, is exactly um, uh, related to your question. Um, as your, your customers uh, become more and more active on social media, there's more and more content being generated with which they can interact on a daily basis from the time they wake up in the morning until the last day before they sleep. Not the time they go to bed, the minute they're asleep. Customer service conversations are not only taking place on the phone anymore. Uh, they're not exclusive one-to-one -one calls or emails, which very nicely relates to your question. Um, mm -hmm. Others can see or even participate in those conversations freely and publicly. This is a double-edged sword for businesses, as the successful ones have found a way to manage it and engage with their audience, uh, while others haven't. Additionally, engagement can be a minefield, especially in regulated industries, because we have seen examples of... Um, uh, peer-to-peer uh, -peer engagement, ending up providing medical advice or financial support without clearly understanding the intricacies of the person that they're trying to help. Um, a, a big challenge for all customer service teams is the staccato effect as well. Conversations that start and stop depending on when the customer is on social or is available to talk to you. Getting the history of past conversations, understanding who they are, and of course, having a way, having the ability to be able to continue the conversation are absolutely vital for the business. So, so George, the, the staccato effect, the stop-start, are there, are there any sectors where the delivery of social customer service is more relevant, would you say? Um, there, isn't, uh, there isn't differentiation between the sectors, no. Um, from private to public, uh, automotive, financial, education, housing associations, laser sector, police councils, you name it. Uh, they all have an audience asking questions and waiting for answers. The principles are the same uh, and uh, in all cases being there and showing that you are available to pick up and answer questions affects very positively the image of the organization um, as we've seen. Okay. So the, the fifth reason behind this is uh, signed posting, uh, from Twitter links to Facebook pages to YouTube videos and many more. Companies are creating a lot of content used to support their customers with value-added information, uh, post-purchase and pre-purchase. A question asked on Facebook could be answered with a link to a YouTube channel and a video that demonstrates how to use the new product or explains the key features of the service. This creates a complex web of engagement environment. Being able to create and manage this environment can be challenging, but very rewarding at the same time. Successful companies are out there listening to those conversations, signposting the audience to the appropriate, the relevant content. Organizations should be listening and responding to customers, both pre-sale and post-sale, and augment it with uh, this um, engagement environment. Finally, the... George, sorry, the question that's come through, and this is an obvious one, I guess, uh, but you've just described a complex environment. Um, is it possible to manage that complex environment without management platform? Obviously, very close to our hearts, um, but, but honestly, be, being honest, you, you have obviously come across clients who uh, perhaps don't use the management platform. But, but yeah, what, what's your view on that? That's, uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, so, is it possible to manage this? It depends on how much time you have and how lightheartedly your organization takes reputational risk and, of course, customer service in general. Delivering customer service without a platform is the same thing as operating a call center without automations, without uh, the ability to put calls on hold, for instance, without having any way of measuring the success or the outcome of those calls and, and so on. The reasons that you want to have uh, a management platform, a tool in place are uh, massively the same. Um, you do that for efficiency, for effective collaboration, for better time management, task management, uh, measuring the success of your customer service team, identifying common themes that your customers are interested in, and of course um, allocating the right content to the right teams, the appropriate teams and so on. So, so theoretically uh, it is possible to do it. Uh, the benefits though of operating through a professional tool um, outweighs the benefits of not doing it and operating on the native platform. So, although it is uh, doable, it is not recommended for, uh, from a cost and efficiency perspective. Okay, thank you, George. 
The the last item that uh, I wanted to talk to you about is uh, customer feedback, as you can see on your screens. Um, and social media is uh, full of customer feedback. Your customers are on social, telling you what you're good at, what your competitors are up to, what their future needs are, and many more. Social media feedback is a brilliant indication as to you whether your product is great or when it needs improvement or even falling apart. Additionally, it is a way of finding out if your other uh, customer service channels are failing or not. It's very important to mention that 12% of the complaints received on social media have arisen as an escalation from dissatisfaction with other um, uh, customer service channels, the traditional, let's say, customer service channels. Research indicates that the companies that uh, proactively respond to feedback and they show that they do so achieve greater spend in the future. And it is very important, uh, this little note here is not just responding, but also showing that you are there picking up this, this content and responding to it. Customers avoid brands that are failing to respond to customer feedback, and therefore a brand that is not in investing in that is statistically more likely to fail them. So why are the brands not on social media? Why are they not there? We believe that it is because of fear. Uh, there are undoubtedly, undoubtedly risks uh, with uh, social media and uh, brands who feel like they are not going to do well under public scrutiny are right to be cautious. Social media is in its very nature socially transparent. This isn't an issue for brands who have nothing to hide, of course, but for those that do, the risk being unseated by their own customers and the comments that they have to make about them. There have been numerous brands who have fallen foul of, foul of this, of course, and uh, we probably um, can definitely recognize a lot of those examples. Uh, that's what O2 discovered, for instance, when they left customers without phone signal for a period of time. However, embracing the transparency through an honest and engaging approach has won through for many brands, including O2, who are um, very successfully turning around unhappy customers' complaints with their amusing and honest social media responses. Some have found that even in their darkest days, for example, the Volkswagen case that uh, you probably are aware of, uh, all those decades of brand building uh, have not gone to waste. And um, when their, strong, their strongest um, brand advocates stepped in uh, on their social media channels to defend the brand on the front line. And this was brilliant because they were creating a peer versus peer uh, response. And this is, uh, of course, a hugely powerful pickup for a brand in need. The lesson for customer service support teams is uh, to accept, I guess, uh, that the, the work that they do on social can influence the success or failure of a brand. Social media is not only an essential, an essential part to the communication mix, it umbrellas all the other channels and needs to have the investment it, diver it deserves. Um, and this is the only way to reap the financial reward that it holds for an organization today. So to sum up, uh, these are the six key reasons that establish social customer service as a win-win for business and customers. Power to the people. Put your customers in the driving seat and let them feel that they extract more value out of your relationship. Convenience. Let them talk to you from uh, whichever channel they choose. Remember that you can deal with up to eight times more inquiries, saving you time and effort. Credibility. Let the word of mouth do the selling for you. Engagement. Allow them to express themselves but listen and be there for your customers in order to manage the staccato effect. Uh, be there when the conversation starts or stops. Signposting, add value to your uh, content and responses, both pre-sale and post-sale. Create this web of engagement and reap the benefits. And uh, finally, feedback. Listen to your customers and what they have to say. You don't have to spend exorbitant amounts on focus groups and surveys. They are there. They're already telling you what you need to do. You just need to sit there and listen. It is reasonable to be scared. Um, you have a right to be if uh, you're not uh, uh, doing customer services on social media already. It is new and challenging. However, with the right process and tools, you can easily and very successfully manage this.
Brilliant. Thank you very much, George. Um, a couple of questions I think I'm going to keep for the panel uh, so that Abby can also share her view. But one that I would uh, just throw, throw at you now um, before we move on to Abby is somebody's asked um, about how, if you have any tips on how to influence the management team uh, to help them integrate social customer care into the overall functioning of their business. So I don't know if you have any tips or and, and maybe discussions that you've had with other clients in the past about how they have influenced their senior management team to get everybody on board um, with you know obviously some of the benefits that you've shared today. Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, if uh, if any of the participants today is uh, is just starting this journey and would be interested in um, uh, getting their hands any material that would help them with that. It is important to mention that we do have a series of useful guides uh, which are full of stats, insights, and information that uh, uh, you can all use for that reason. Uh, also, we, we do have a team of experts uh, that we can, uh, we can help you both from a software perspective and a consultancy perspective. Um, it, is, um, it is all down to having the right tool and the right process, uh, basically. As long as you can uh, back up the requirements that you have with evidence and data, uh, then it would be very hard for anyone to deny you these uh, resources, and uh, we can provide you with both. Okay, and, and is it something that you come across a lot, George, today? Is it really the case? I know it was certainly the case three or four years ago, but is it still the case that people, uh, man heads of management, uh, heads of marketing, heads of customer service, are still trying to sell and promote the use of social media, or do you think that those days are now gone? Um, it is not complete. Uncommon. It is um, it is something that we have seen um, in um, uh, in in, in uh, uh, some companies and some organisations that we work with, um, and this is of course what has uh, given us the tools and the expertise to uh, to help them in um, in this journey. Okay. I think right. is well, it possible you... just to chip in there? Uh, please, Abby, um, do. <laughs> it just this was something that we faced sort of three four years ago, particularly from a senior management perspective. Um, and I think, I mean, I can't comment on everyone else's situation, but from our perspective, it was very much, we're a, a set up sort of within operating companies. So we have sort of a national team who are sitting at the sort of pole face um, and responsible for the whole UK brand. But then you have the regional opcos who have managing directors um, and re, uh, manage, uh, marketing managers there and marketing directors too. And I think years, previous years, um, when we were, coming to really launch in our first sort of strategy and integrating the sort of customer service side of things we did see that it was more the fear so I think from my perspective I just I the way we tackled it was from an evidence perspective it was we, we literally pulled off everything that was being said about us online on these social media channels um, and then sort of presenting the sort of this is how we tackle it because like you say and I know George has mentioned that just by it's almost that's your way of almost not controlling the situation, but it's it's managing that reputation and showing that you're communicating and being cooperative, which is ultimately providing the good customer service. So I guess really it's just having that sort of evidence and showing people exactly what's being said and kind of drafting up a plan of how that would then filter down. Fantastic. It's as if, as if you've read some of the uh, feedback, uh, yeah, some of the minds of the people who are on the line today, Abby, because actually Fear Factor has come back uh, from a couple of uh, participants. So uh, I'm just mm. reading out um, some of it. So partly fear, um, but somebody has said, um, but it was also uh, a lack of confidence in where to start and the, the feeling yeah. that actually um, you know, the social media was only part of the issue. There, there had to be some really um, strong planning. You've, you've mentioned the plan um, that, that went back e even as far as you know, the core messaging of the brand because they're realizing that the brand was going to be so publicly scrutinized on social that, um, yeah. that as a business they felt that there needed to be more work done on the brand before they felt confident to press the green light on, on the social customer care side. So, um, so yeah, really interesting. Okay, right. Well, Abby, without further ado, um, it would be fantastic if I can introduce you to uh, talk about providing good customer care. So I, I think what, what this um, session really 
is about is bringing all of this to life and giving us that case study and, and genuine insight into what you've learned along the way. So over to you. Thank you, Kiz. And just let me know if anyone's got any questions uh, along the way and interrupt me. <laughs> I will do. I will do. Don't you worry. So just on the, the next slide, sorry. I don't seem to have control. So uh, It uh, should be with you now. So Fab. Yes, fantastic. I thought it'd be really good to take everyone through sort of our overall structure because I can understand obviously that quite a lot of people have these complexities similar to ours. So as I mentioned previously, um, I sit as a social media manager in our national marketing team. So we're responsible for the overall UK brand from a bus perspective. Um, we, as I mentioned as well, we have sort of regional operating companies that have um, regional marketing teams, depot staff, and also sort of MDs, ops, and everything um, all under those sort of circumstances and we also have a customer contact centre um, who, are, who are a national team that are based technically in Luton um, and really for me I just wanted to highlight that we have over 100 people at some point coming into contact with crowd control and customer service so particularly the main sort of focus really is on our customer service representatives who are solely responsible for responding to all the incoming queries that we get um, so really that was my sort of key when I joined the company three years ago it was my key focus is to really develop and get those guys comfortable in handling all the queries we get coming in and really that kind of helps us really move forward our sort of social media strategy as well okay and then just really to give you an overview of our sort of collective audience is that we have all of these channels um, that we are broadcasting on but also taking queries and comments and questions coming in so a collective audience of over 103,000 people so we do get a significant level of queries that do come in because it, effectively we are a service-based industry so a lot of our queries are around the product service that we offer. Um, so really Abby, I can I just, be... uh, Abby I'm going to interrupt because just, just because um, it's relevant <laughs> to your very first slide. Um, so uh, the issue of training so you've talked about yeah. the focus on customer service representatives um, yeah. And uh, are you able to share just some of the, the, the training um, and development that the customer service representatives have to do uh, to do the job that they do? Yeah. So every year we do um, we invest in having an external body come in, um, and it's normally really a marketing focused person that comes in um, to do an overview of social media today. Um, take people through the trends, what's good, do a full analysis of what we do, present that back to us, and we have the customer service representatives from a custom, um, sorry, the customer service representatives who do social media there, as well as the regional marketing teams as well. So it's an all-encompassing day to ensure that everyone's almost singing off the same hymn sheet. But aside from that, I regularly go down to Luton, so we're, we're twice a, twice a month, I normally go down and sit with my customer service representative, um, and discuss openly what's what's the issues where what any issues they have and vice versa but I also run refresher training every six months as well so looking at feeding back from a lot of the regional marketing teams will feed back on things they're not happy with um, if they're not happy with a certain response so then we work ways or, around how is that what is the best response for x query um, and then also just keep refreshing that every six months to make sure that we the team are confident Okay, and is there a particular profile that you think makes a good customer service representative? So when you're looking at the social customer care, you know, are you looking for great English? Are you looking for technical ability? Is that, do you have any tips on, on what you think makes a good uh, operator in, in that environment? Yeah, I guess really it's... Um We've, we're quite lucky that we've had the same customer representative, customer service representatives um, with us over four years now. Um, we're quite lucky that we've had to re we recruit. We've had two sort of extra people join and they just did competency-based questions. So we set them challenges of what our typical queries are coming in um, and asked them to answer them. And it was just a case of um, analysing who was best at sort of providing the best response really and also who work well as part of a team because they all sit together and they all bounce off each other really well with um, bridging the gap between providing an answer to a question but also that engagement of personality as well. 
Okay, and that answers the third question, which is they're located together. So in theory, they're yeah. able to talk to each other and, and share. Yes, okay, fantastic. Yeah. But just to just to kind of highlight as well, a, a customer service team have to physic a lot of the time have to physically contact our depots. So at the moment, we're not in a position where we have a sort of all encompassing control centre where we the customer service team have full insight to every similar to how sort of London Transport is. They have full insight of where every train is at that given moment. We don't because ultimately we have drivers that um, until they're back at the depot, we don't know what's happened on that particular route so that's kind of brings me nicely on to the sort of the, the, the quick responses um yeah. so our customer service guys will always respond within an hour hopefully and even if that's just to say um we'll, we'll we'll check and get back to you because a lot of the time that's what we have to do because we have to then physically ring the depots to find out what's happened on that route if it isn't um a pre a sort of if, if it isn't road works for instance we know that that happens uh, so we can normally have that as a backup in terms of if there's delays it's normally to do with roadworks but yeah um one of the key sort of thought, good to take the names and what a sort of go-to guide is so we we have a rule that we don't respond to swearing um in terms of how that works facebook we've got our profanity filters set to strict and um, obviously twitter doesn't allow that but we don't respond if a customer does come back to us and asks why are you ignoring me we will then highlight to them that if any swearing or links or anything like that has been in their comment then it would have been automatically deleted um another slide i've got in a moment takes you through what we've got as house rules so that's a set of rules that um we've had agreed with our legal team and um internally as well that that this is our we don't respond to these comments and this is where we point customers to if, if, if they really get upset that we've not responded to them um and then so is it zero tolerance Totally zero tolerance on, I don't know, if somebody was saying something was shit hot, would that, would that be out yeah. completely? Or, there is yeah. a, no, it is, there is a degree of gauging whether it's, a gen, if, if it's abusive or not. I think that's, that's, that's yeah. the borderline. If someone's been abusive, then it's, we don't respond. But if, if it's um, a genuine query, so for instance, we've had people with um, handles that have contained swearers, so it'll be... Um, like you say, shit hot Jenny or something would be at her at name. Um, but she's asked a genuine, qu a, qu a genuine question. So if that is the case, and we've had it with racial slander as well within people's at names, it's it's really gauging, drawing back to the question. Uh, ultimately, if we're seen to be providing the customer with an answer, that, that's the main objective. I know that obviously there's an argument around brand reputation, but ultimately, if you are responding to a genuine query, that trumps everything, in my right. opinion. Sure, I, and I guess you're protecting the other customers who are who are in your inv social environment as well, because actually, you yeah. know, for, for somebody that is common language, for another, it could be offensive. So I guess you've got to find that fine balance. So yeah. Yeah. I suppose that um, there's a degree of common sense there, isn't there? And, and ultimately, if if if, if the, what's, you've got to ask yourself, what's the worst that could actually happen from this situation? Um, and then in terms of escalating complaints, so a lot of the time, particularly for us, we get a huge amount of influx if there's a particular operational issue, roadworks, snow, um, price increases, all these potentially damaging things that happen. Um, in our industry that we just have a robust plan in place and we just make sure that anything that is spiraling out of control that we direct people to log a complaint which is through our system so that's taking people off the page to potentially sort of fuel the fire if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, and that leads on to the next one and ne negative conversations off the page um, and also interfering with negative support spirals as well and Communication of our time. So we operate at the moment. Um, we're not 24/7. It is a view that we're we're looking at. Well, we're currently in looking at business cases as to how we sort of extend and keeping moving with the times that everyone expects that we're a 24/7 operation. Um, but in terms of at the moment, we just communicate with a sign-on and sign-off message when we're around to answer queries and when we're going home for the day. Um, from a customer service perspective so our customer service teams are responsible for updating those and then really the overall aims is that we, we try and have a conversation and we're transparent as we can be 
Okay, um, just before you move on, Abby, so negative okay. conversations, that's always a, a hot topic in social media customer yeah. care. So the extent to which um, you know, some brands will delete anything that uh, they believe uh, is a negative comment about their brand, whereas others feel that actually it's a bit self-regulating. So somebody will say that a service isn't so good, but actually happy customers get involved in that conversation. And ultimately, there's the big thank you if you do resolve an issue um, that's been particularly yeah. painful to a customer. Um, how do you define, so you, you've posted there, you know, remove negative comments, but, but can you just give us a little bit more in terms of what a negative comment constitutes in, in Areva? Uh, in that environment, what yeah, what that means? Yeah. Um, so by taking extremely negative conversation off the page, I don't actually condone in deleting anything unless it yeah. is okay. um, infringing on our house rules. Um, so for me, it's it's about having that conversation as and where we aim to resolve the query without logging a complaint formally. However, if for instance, there is a severely negative, for instance, if there's been a crash, a bus crash, we go into crisis mode. So um, if if that happens, then we ask people to call a certain helpline. Um, that's like worst case scenario. Um, but in terms of if a bus is late, we aim to respond on the page and provide an answer, even if that is the bus is broken down. So that would be, we'd, we'd class that as operational difficulty or staff sickness is an operational difficulty. Um, we we avoid delving into the actual nuts and bolts of exactly why because that opens further conversation so we have a set of sort of not blanket responses but sort of an overview of this is this is what an operational difficulty is defined as this is what is external situations such as traffic roadworks temporary traffic lights um all things like that does that answer the question for everyone? Yeah, okay, so so just um, that categorization seems to be really important. So yeah, yeah. to help, help define which gets removed and which stays. Okay. Yeah, and I guess really it's about, if, if you've got negative, I mean I'll come on, to, come on to that in a moment, but if you've got a neg potentially negative comment, so someone is upset that the 42 is late, if you're providing and being cooperative with that customer, ultimately there, there is there is nine times out of ten you will aim to squash that and other customers see that you've responded and that customer leaves satisfied with the response that you've given. So what might start off as a potentially fear negative, oh my God, we can't have this about our brand. If you've dealt with it in the correct manner, it ultimately neutralizes that negative whereas if you were delete it that customer would be absolutely infuriated because all they yeah. want to do on social media is be heard so yeah. it's about managing that sort of it's, it's, it's like a scales isn't it you sort of constantly balancing trying to balance in any negative but also shouting about the positives as well yeah yeah okay so this is our house rule so this is sat on a, a, a web page so you can't find it anywhere on our website it's just a floating page but our customer service team will direct people to this area um, to if they're asking why things have been deleted. So, so that just outlines sort of phishing, spamming, links, uh, abusive swearing, racist slander, um, hateful language, um, competitive sort of information. So if people are posting about a new bus route, we will delete things like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's our go-to people get really upset about their comment not being on the page. Okay, useful. So again, if um, any of you who are listening, if you could give us a bit of feedback um, on, you know, do, do you have house rules? Are those house rules public? Um, and also quite interested in the response time. So Abby's mentioned responding within an hour. Um, you know, to what extent uh, do, you, do you have a more stringent response rate time or um, are some of you lucky if you manage to get back to your customers within half a day to a day? So let us know, just give, give us a thermometer gauge on that one so that we can share <laughs> more widely uh, across those who are on the line. So thanks, Abby. No problem. I just thought it would be good to sh highlight sort of the examples, typical examples we get. So Louise has lost something on one of the buses um, and then we respond and say, you chat with us directly so we have a system in place called live chat which is effectively like msm messenger for anyone that can remember that um and it allows us to really chat to the customer live 
um, can get their personal details. So we have a rule where we don't ask people to share any of their personal details because obviously social media is public. Um, yeah. So yeah, and I guess really here it's just that we really try and push the the use of chatty language. As you all know, our um, we our customer service team do use the emoji keyboard, um, and also we, we try desperately not to be a prescribed response even though we do get a lot of the similar sort of overview of sort of queries we get coming in and I guess really for me it's just about closing those conversations off so ultimately when when someone's finished they say thank you we like their comment just to kind of say yeah we've we've heard it yeah okay and this is just an example of our um our sign on messages so it's rise and rise and shine um Matt and Matt, Matt and Mark are here to help. So our customer service guys, our, our previously when I first joined, we were in a position where we didn't want to publish names, whereas our customer service representatives actually want to be coming across as people. So they actively wanted to to share share their names, um, which they have done. And I guess here it just highlights that what what's happening with the 28. Um, many people were left waiting, which is really bad. Um, we asked for further details on it. They confirm the further details, and then we say that it's due to operational difficulties. We, we, we we're sorry, um, and the customer liked our comment, and that was the end of it. So we can take from that that, albeit a really bad situation, because um, she wasn't happy, is that she left that left the conversation with a, a, a sort of a suitable response. And that's me done. Fantastic, Abby. Thank you very, very much. Um, a, a really useful insight into the practical. I think that's the the bottom line. We often <laughs> talk about the strategic planning and uh, integration of, of plans, but actually, you're practically living and breathing this. And as we know, um, you know, the the rule book has been changing and evolving, and, and obviously, yeah. those on the line are helping to do that. So. Um, fantastic. Right, now we have got quite a lot of questions, um, so I uh, will be conscious of time, so I, I'm going to pick out some of the quirky and um, unusual and then signpost some of you to further information as well. So um, Delia, thank you very much for this one, I think this is one of my favourite questions. Um, so in terms of the pressures, the financial pressures that we are under, and I'm going to ask both you, uh, Abby and George, um, financial pressures we're under to, to cost down, so to speak, you know, to, to, to bring costs down of, of, of social customer care. Um, do you foresee, and I guess what your view, what is your view on, on chatbots, um, I suppose replacing people uh, with robots and, and um, you know, Abby, you've talked about the, the, the great people that you have as your customer service representatives. Um, you know, can you imagine a day when they, they don't exist or if, if they didn't exist then they were actually some sort of uh, robot and obviously some brands use this um, you know, a lot obviously we've got some financial services and banking on the line and um, and perhaps you have a view already because you, you know you you use this kind of approach but um, yeah what what are your views in terms of chatbots and um, any of the sort of artificial intelligence approaches that uh, are now being used to sort of automate uh, the customer service uh, approach on social yeah. media any views yeah I think in in theory it's a great idea but i think all we know as people is I, well i know how i am as a person i want an instantaneous response that is the quickest and most efficient way because everyone is time poor um nowadays so i think naturally social media is the platform where a if you're really infuriated and want to be heard that you take to um but ultimately you will have a run from there as well so i do think that yeah it's good in theory but it should be supplemented by actual people responding on sort of social media and I think from a cost perspective it is it I obviously I'm classed as a marketing function so we're constantly be hammered about ROI and I think just to we're in a position now and um, this year where I can categorically say what return I'm bringing in um, based on the investment that is happening on the bottom line and I think ultimately once you're able to justify that through um, I mean, I use a lot of tracking links and things like that through Google Analytics where I can say X amount of traffic is coming in by station and that person spent X amount of money. And I think once you get to, um, obviously each business is different, but I think once you get to that position where you can actually say, well, yeah, because of X, Y, and Z region, reasons that 
we're doing on social media from customer service to marketing and I think once you get to that that bottom line figure it's it's hard to really challenge um, whether that cost is is driving the investment because ultimately it is um, okay and George I, just any views that, on that's... Yeah, absolutely. I think I think I agree with uh, with Abby on that, and um, and the fact that it's uh, it's quite a difficult question to answer because it very much depends on the the content that is being um, that is being asked there. Um, automating the responses um, could essentially could essentially mean that uh, you can cut down the, the expenses indeed. So you make the um, if we reflect back to the six elements that we talked about, you if you make the signposting process easier. However, um, is the technology there today uh, to do that? Up to a certain extent, it might. And depending, of course, on the questions that um, you're being asked, it might be. However, I strongly believe that you cannot. Uh, uh, it is not that easy to take out the uh, the personal uh, touch from uh, from response. And of course, uh, we need to consider as well the the time that the person is um, uh, investing in writing down uh, the question and sending it to us. Um, uh, it really depends on. What are the business views on that? What the organization thinks uh, about that and considers the time that someone spends on um, uh, getting online to ask a question um, and a point this question to us, and how would they feel if uh, they just saw an automated robot um, responding to their question? Uh, it was quite interesting to see previously, for instance, in uh, um, the slide that Abby shared with us that um, uh, they, they're not afraid to put the, the names of the people that are responding out there. And yeah, uh, yeah. Just, I just I, think that it adds such a, such a nice personal touch to the whole conversation and uh, from, um, uh, from, from an, an empowerment and an engagement point of view, I think that the, the user does, does feel, the, the customer does feel that um, uh, if uh, the company that I am talking to um, is taking the time to put together a response. Someone, uh, another person on the other side of the line, is putting the time together to respond to me. Um, I would, I would personally feel much more uh, um, uh, happy with uh, the service that I received um, compared to knowing that it's just a robot on the other side uh, sending me automated responses like the ones that they sent to another 100 people today with no customization at all, um, which means that. The company has not taken the time to look into my needs as an individual person, my individual needs, and put together a proper response um, which reflects my personal intricacies. Sure. Well, it's a good, uh, you know, in terms of marketing, they're saying that one of the new P's of marketing is personalization, and certainly um, it puts it at risk, doesn't it, that rapport building, um, a human interaction. It's interesting, Abby talked about. The emojis and the, you know the smiley faces and you know and it's quite a, a sophisticated uh, relationship approach where you know you're able to ascertain what is the most you know the most appropriate emoji to use in that particular situation. Um, so the thought of that being automated, you know, I still think we're we're quite a long way off um, in terms of what automation solutions are out there. I know um, you know in terms of a key driver for customer satisfaction customer satisfaction is directly influenced by social customer care and that directly drop you know drives the bottom line so yeah interesting and again if um, uh, any of you um, people are saying thank you dearly saying she agrees very much um, uh, it's crucial that you find the right interplay and the, the right balance um, so again if, if anybody's out there who is running an automated social customer care response quite successfully um, with the use of bots um, we'd love to hear from you because um, clearly you know, we're currently of the mindset that um, that human interplay um, and that great pride that Abby describes of her team wanting to use their names, you know, wanting to be part of um, the brand and, and, and be brave and bold and, and say, no, this is who I am and I represent this brand, I think is fantastic. So, um, but really interesting question, so thank you very much, Delia. Um, Tom, I'm going to move on to uh, you. So um, Tom is curious about the strategies for integration. So obviously the holy grail, uh, integration. I guess there was a feeling that social media has been very much you know, a standalone uh, activity, standalone department, and slowly but surely it is being integrated into the, the bigger picture. So in an environment of call centers, web chats, 
uh, even online forms that people can fill in with um, customer satisfaction and customer surveys, that kind of thing. Um, you know, Abby, I guess this is directed at you. Um, you know, again, is there any practical processes that you've had to go through to allow that seamless integration into what was already in existence um, and, what, and what was already in existence, I guess, prior to the birth of social media uh, for Arivo. Uh, could you give us any insight on that? Yeah, I guess from a it's it's for, from a, our perspective, it's the, from a customer service point of view. It is we are quite lucky that we have a contact centre all in one area and one place. So from a we can piece together a a, a sort of the jigsaw from that in terms of if our customers come through on live chat then we know they may have been on social media and vice versa because we have the same teams that handle all of that. Um, from a reporting perspective, which is another thing that we do constantly, is is obviously I work with the teams to, to run run those reports through obviously crowd control. Um, and then they can they feed in because we have obviously the campaigns tool in uh, crowd control, we flag those, they're, they're exactly mirrored to what queries we get through, if they came through on email, phone, or live chat as well. So we can see the volumes and marry those up so it's, it's an integrated picture. From an actual comms perspective, um, very much so, we, a national campaign level, we work in an integrated approach from CRM to above the line um, and, and the regional teams feed into that from a regional perspective. So what I mean by that is we'll have the overarching campaign idea from a national perspective, but the regional are the ones with the knowledge. So they will they will hone in on sort of specific routes, what they want to to how that kind of plugs in from a, a route specific perspective. Because as a national team, we have well we wouldn't we wouldn't have that knowledge. So I don't know whether that kind of gives an overview really of how it works from a, a customer service, but also a marketing perspective as well. And is there anything on your wish list for the future, Abby? You know, is there any area that you're saying, do you know what, we're, going, we're, we're working at that, we're still working, we haven't, we haven't quite got that fully integrated, social media fully integrated into that particular area of the business, but, we're, but it's a work in progress. Yeah, I guess for me, when I first joined, I didn't understand the full complexities of actually how the sort of intricate detail of our networks, but I think for me, one of the key things I'd love to launch is is lifetime bus information on Twitter. So we have similar to sort of the rail companies that you, they have a control centre and know exactly where things are, um, the trains are at certain points. So if anything's delayed, they can push out a message. Whereas we're not we're not in that at that point yet. Um, but that's sort of my that's my long game. Okay. Uh, and uh, and do any of the just out of interest, do any of the drivers uh, use social media? And have you got any? interesting profiles there in terms of human interest side I guess more PR um, but in terms of we do yeah we have sort of key drivers that are great at, and want to be involved from a, a customer facing point of view but equally we do have HR involved from HR policy that everyone has to sign a social media policy um, so yeah it's not an angle that we really push because a lot of people don't want to have that association with um, sort of the online presence on a personal level because we need to remember that obviously social media is quite a personal thing um, yeah. but we do have drivers that are at the forefront of our marketing campaigns um, who do really like to get involved from a PR perspective as well. Yeah, okay. Great, right, I'm conscious of time and uh, so I would just like to say a really big thank you to you Abby for giving up your time and sharing your experience and insight and also George um, likewise for uh, sharing uh, your insights on this topic. So um, a big thank you to those of you who have joined us today. Just a, a quick mention, um, Abby has just nicely rounded off a uh, mention of HR there. We, our next webinar is with Steve Kuntsevich who is an, a leading guru uh, in all things legal and has got very interesting insights on HR policy when it comes to social media. So. Uh, you please watch this space to tune in again in a month's time to listen to Steve. Um, we also have uh, the ultimate guide to customer service on social media um, broken down into six different key areas because we appreciate that uh, social customer care varies amongst sectors. 
Uh, some of you are very much short shot responses, where others uh, you may have to manage customer relationships over a very long period of time. So um, those are available on our website for download. Uh, and again, watch this space because we'll have uh, webinars and other resource and support in the future. So a really uh, big thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, so this webinar was brought to you by Car Control HQ, UK's leading social media management and compliance platform. Um, and if you do need any help, as George mentioned, please don't hesitate to get in touch. There are a number of ways, obviously through our website, but also please don't forget to tweet us at Crowd Control HQ. And if you have any final thoughts, please do share them. Um, the panel would be very open to uh, receiving feedback on their presentations. And we hope you have a very successful and uh, enjoyable day and we'll speak to you soon. So thanks very much for joining us.